Welcome back. This is part two of our SketchUp tutorial series that shows you some tools that you can use for making a basic house in Google SketchUp. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, how to divide a line, how to use the offset tool, and even the follow me tool to make some more complex shapes, and also be dealing a bit with um, how to use textures. Now to start with, um, students always want to add stairs to their house because most of the time uh, your front door is at the top of a small flight of stairs and there's a good way to make stairs that are nice and evenly divided in Google SketchUp. Let's pretend that our stairs are here and I'm going to draw a rectangle on my surface and before I pull it out I'm going to grab the arrow tool and click on this line here and then I can right click or control click and I want to divide it and what this will do is divide this line into segments and if I move my mouse up or down it changes the number of segments in the line so if I have three stairs leading up to my door. I can leave it here. Just click and when I go back with my pencil tool, now there's two extra endpoints on my line and I can be confident that it's equally divided into three different pieces. So I can move across on the red axis, divide it here, and divide it again here and now I can pull these out to create my stairs and if you want to be really precise about it you can type in measurements so that you know that the stairs tops are of equal size too so just for simplicity sake I could say this is one meter this one could be 0.66 of a meter and this one could be 0.33 of a meter and I have a nice set of stairs there. Now of course at the top of the stairs there's going to be a door and to start I can just make a rectangle that looks like the size of a door and some students just stop here. They say that looks like a door. But of course it's not 3D and it's missing a lot of the features that a real door would have. So to make it look a bit more like a door you can use the offset tool. And what that does is it will create another set of bounding edges for a surface either inside this surface like that or outside the surface. So I can use this to make a door frame around my door and immediately it looks more like a door. And if I zoom in and pull this out, now before I can zoom in and pull this out, um, I'm going to have to recreate these edges here because if you can imagine it, this line actually continues underneath the stairs so I had to cut that there in order to pull this out as one piece and I've got a bit of a door frame there and the same works for windows so let's pretend I have a window here I'll just do this very quickly I can use my divide trick divide this into three add some lines at the, those endpoints and I'm making sure to follow the axis direction of blue so that I know it's on the surface and I know that it's perpendicular and then I could go in with the offset tool pick a distance that's the same for each one let's say 0.05 meters 
and then just go along with the offset tool and do that three times. Now I can go in with the arrow tool and select these and get rid of them. Okay, while we're here making windows and doors, I'm going to show you one way to make something that looks like a doorknob. Because students always want to add a doorknob and inevitably the simplest thing to do is just to draw a circle and pull it out, but that doesn't really look much like a doorknob that you have in your home. So with a few more steps you can make a doorknob that looks a lot more realistic. Now you can start with this circle shape, but then what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. If you hover at the edge of the circle for two seconds you can move to the center and it'll tell you where the exact center of the circle is. What you want to do is get to a viewpoint where you can draw a line going perpendicular out from the center of that circle. So you can use the trick of holding down the left arrow so that you're only moving on the green axis. And you're going to want to draw a line that's as long as your doorknob. Okay. Then you could draw another smaller line that goes up from that line. And basically what we're drawing is half of the profile of your doorknob. Okay, so I'm going to hold down the left arrow again, so I'm only moving in the green. Draw something like that, and then I'm going to grab the arc tool. And with the arc tool, you click to start, click where you want your arc to finish, and then pull up to get your arc angle. And there we go. I have the profile of half of my doorknob. Of course, it doesn't look like a doorknob yet. And I have to go to view and look at my large tool set to find the follow me tool. And in the last video, I used the follow me tool to draw a chimney that was going straight up out of the roof. This time, we're going to use the follow me tool to take this surface and have it follow around this line. So I'm going to grab my surface and I'm going to move it around that line until it looks like a doorknob. Now that looks more like a doorknob than our first option. You can go back in and delete this circle now. Um, if you want to get really fancy, you could also grab the sphere and then hit S. S is your scale tool. And I can grab any of these points and distort the sphere. I could grab this point, for example, and squish it a bit. If your doorknob is looking a little too round. And then it's a little shortened, a little more squat, and it looks to me more like a doorknob. Okay, now the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, textures, because we have a house here that's starting to look pretty good, but it's just plain white. And so when you feel like you've got a good start on your house, uh, you're probably going to want to start adding some textures. And so you use the paint bucket tool to do that. When I click on the paint bucket, I have the uh, simplified color palette come up. But what I want to do is go to the brick. And the brick is the set of textures that you can use in SketchUp. So if I click here, I get my menu open. And I can choose from a number of different texture categories. Uh, I'm going to work with the roof. So 
I'll go to roofing, and here I've got a different different set of um, roofing that I can choose from. Um, I'm gonna choose these roofing tiles, and then you can just go in and click on the surface you want to cover in roofing tiles. Now here's a little tip. If you've designed your house and you get to this point and you start adding textures and your house is not to a scale that makes sense for a house, your texture might be a lot larger or a lot smaller than what you were expecting. In the case of that happening, you can go in with the arrow and click on that surface that has the texture and then you can actually go to texture position and that allows you to change different parameters about your texture. For example, if you needed to, you could rotate it by clicking on the green circle and you can also scale it larger or smaller. And you can see that it's just a repeating tiled pattern. Um, so you can skew it if you need to, you, need, you can move uh, the starting point of the tiles and uh, you can distort it in a number of different ways. Okay, so that's a, number, a little tip to make your texture look a bit more realistic. Uh, one more thing I wanted to quickly mention. Um, you notice when I made these windows here, I made sure that they were all the same size. Because of our position right here, they don't look like the same size right now, but they are. Um, and that's because when someone's designing a house, it's usually very uh, symmetrical and there's a lot of continuity between all of the um, architectural choices. So if you are, are deciding to make windows, for example, for your house, uh, check to see if there's a relationship between the different windows that you have on your house. Um, and if there is, you can use the Move tool, and if you just click on Alt on your Mac, um, it'll give you that little plus sign, and that means that you can move something, and but also copy it. So I'll click on this surface here, and then grab the Move tool, and then I'm going to make sure to grab the bottom corner and that way I can infer to that bottom corner with the new one that I'm making. And then I can make sure that they're actually lined up on the red axis there. And voila, I've got two windows that are I, I'm sure are the exact same size. And then I can go in with the offset and pick a distance, 0.1 meters, do the same here, 0.1 meters, and then I have some consistency in my house. So I hope these simple tips have helped, and I hope they give your building a more professional look. Thanks for watching.